Welcome back, I'm Kim Bailey and this is Floralot Online, the supermarket series. Today we're going to revisit something that's a fairly standard way of putting flowers into a vase, but we're going to look at using a standard vase that you might have around, that you might have inherited or that you might have picked up somewhere around about the place. Just if you get given a bunch of flowers, what do you do with them? Because they're all going to be around about the same height and, and our tendency is to just pop them in a vase and not think about the way they're being displayed. So we're going to go through a few things that you need to know about putting flowers into a vase. So we're going to need a vase, first of all, some sticky tape, now clear tape I would recommend. I'm going to use the green so you can see what I'm doing, but clear tape is fine. Your bunch of flowers and a little bit of greenery. If no greenery came with your bunch of flowers, then a little bit of greenery out of the garden. And so I've got, I've just picked a couple of branches that we're going to use. And I, I picked this one in particular because I want to show you what to do when you've got branches that have a, a shape of their own. So let's gather all of our bits together and get started. Right, I've dispensed with the scarf so that it doesn't get in the way while we're doing our preparation. I can see where there's sticky tape on this vase from where I've done this method previously. So we'll just remove that. So what we're going to do is make a grid. And that's the easiest way for us to put a bunch of flowers into a vase and know that they're going to stay in place. The, uh, the other alternative is if you've got the, the bunch, wrap them with a little bit of um, an elastic band or tape or string of some description to keep it in the, the shape that the bouquet has come in and then just put it straight into the vase. What I will warn you about, and I will you'll see me doing it here, is that if you're going to have water up to the top of the vase like that, Anything that is below the water is going to deteriorate and cause discoloration and smell and it just encourages all of the uh, microorganisms to start growing into the water. So always clear the stems that are going to be below the water line. It, it also gives you a nicer look when you're looking through the vase and it will keep the water clearer for longer. So let's get a start on the grid. Basically it's just putting tape across the top in, in a grid fashion. So there we have our grid, obviously with the clear tape you wouldn't see the, the edges around that, that way but we'll cover those up with a little bit of the foliage so that you don't see them as obviously in the green as you might do with the clear. Make sure that your vase is dry when you put the tape on otherwise it'll just lift off as this one is because the vase was still wet from where I'd washed it. But there we have the, the grid. Now if, you, if you're worried about those coming loose, you can run another bit of tape around the outside as well. But for the exercise today, we won't worry about doing that. In terms of, of putting the grid together, the spacings for the grids, I always leave a little bit of space between the rim and the first row of the tape, just so that I can get placement into right into the edges to, to drape down over the sides of the vase. Once again, that'll be a matter of trial and error for you to see what, what looks best in terms of what you're being given. But as a simple exercise to keep plant material in place in a vase, an open-ended vase, this is the best method to use. So next thing we look at is the shape of the vase. So it's coming, it's flaring out. <clears throat> now normally when we would get a, a bunch of flowers, put them in the middle and if they're not joined in the, at, at the, the stems, then they will open up naturally and you'll get a, a, a spray, a fan shape, which is what we want to follow the line of that vase but they're not evenly spaced or they might all be the same height. So what we want to think about is not just having that fan shape, but having interest all around the display of plant material that we've got. So what we'll start with, first of all, put some water in, and then we'll start with 
our foliage first of all that will give us the structure the outside shape and then we'll start to put some placements in of the chrysanthemums that have come from the supermarket which I forgot to tell you before yes I have a bunch of chrysanthemums now you see I'm not filling that all the way up I just want to make sure that the water doesn't get too displaced when I start to put the plant material in because then you have spillage and trying to manage all those other sorts of things as well so we move some of this stuff out of the way so I can be ready so as I said about keeping that foliage now we could easily just put that in wouldn't think about it twice but it's, it's got um, seed heads as well as the foliage so we're just going to pull them off so that they're not below the water line and we're just going to look at the natural shape of this stem so it's <coughs> coming out one way or the other my voice has gone strange today so either side we could have it just to give us to follow that line of the vase same with this one we've actually got a bonus here we've got two I will take that off and we might put him on the other side so that's giving us each side of the arrangement following the lines so if we looked at it being an all-round design then we'd have one on, on these cardinal points these clock face points as well so that we had the four ways but let's just think of it as in terms of sitting up against a wall or perhaps we might have some smaller ones there in case you wanted to move it to a table so we've got this one that was joined it's got two branches that go either side plus a, a smaller one in the middle what we can do with that we we can cut them both off there and then they would both be more or less the same size or we can have one longer than the other so cut one there and leave the other one the full length which is what I'm going to do and in doing that you can always cut that second one down if you wanted to and so once again looking at that natural shape if we we put it in the back here it will bring itself forward into the design now it's not going to sit there for the time being because I need to put other plant material in it and then we can have this one at the front that is reflecting that same shape it's just a little bit heavy to stay there The, the beauty of having the grid is that you can take these pieces in and out I'm just going to cut it off a little bit and see if that helps it physically balance in the, in the vase it's better but it's not perfect we'll let it go the way it wants to and then we'll adjust it as we go along and now we come to placing the actual flowers now already I'm seeing looking at it from the back that this branch is too long so I'm going to trim that off now before we go any further I'll just have it in there well, I think that's what we might have to do with this back on I think it's just always going to just be a little bit too heavy for that area trim it down to make it sit a bit better so there we go that's sitting a bit better and it's blended into the other side so now we've got our bunch of supermarket flowers our chrysanthemums plenty to choose from as you know we've used chrysanthemums in the past so you can cut them down and have more than just the stems that are presented to you in the bunch itself there 
you haven't been just clearing off the foliage of these before I decide on sizings and which ones to use. So we've got four stems, even though we've got all those flowers that you saw at the beginning. in the laundry for a few days and I opened the door the other day and thought oh smells like Mother's Day and then I realized it was the chrysanthemums that had been sitting in the water in the bucket for a little bit we have our chrysanthemums stripped of their of most of their foliage so that I can see what we've actually got and what we can use and what I'm looking for first of all is the tallest ones so that we coming out from the vase shape we come out to here and we do our triangle at the top so yes it will mean that you will cut down flowers that you get given but let's make it into a good display that's going to last longer So for this central one, I'm just going to look at which is the most open because I don't necessarily want the biggest flowers at the top because that will draw your eye to the top and not in and around and through all of the other flowers that you've got there. So let's just take this one which because they're all the same length. It's quite straightforward for me to choose which one's the tallest. And that one goes in the middle of our grid and you can see how easy that it is to put them into the grid they just sit there and behave which is very good now some of these others I could use them in as the the whole stems but I would probably cut them down to vary the the heights a little bit so let's just try that clean cut because they've been sitting in water themselves we just need to give them a clean cut so they've got a nice fresh area to take the water in so I'm going to take this one a little bit more to the back work around Probably not low enough. What, what I'm looking for is that it's lower than the surrounding plant material. So this one I'm going to cut right down. That is a couple of spares. So there you should be able to see how much fuller that looks because we've brought it down so that it and we'll do the same on this side few extras that we can just slide in that once again brings that interest down through the design so you can see the color see glimpses of the color in the base of the design without actually having plant material there so there we have just the basics of putting flowers into a vase, varying the heights, doing the grid so that you've got ways of placing and removing flowers from one to the other 
and and with this one I would fill it out and I will fill it out when I do the, the photos fill it out a little bit more with some more foliage so that you can't see that grid but I did want to, you to be able to see the grid and see how I use the grid so that you can transfer that to your vases and to your flowers so there we have it using a grid to put flowers into an open necked vase making sure we maintain the shape of the vase and still have interest throughout the whole of the placement of, of the uh, bouquet that you've been given. I'm Kim Bowie, this is Floral Art Online.